what you gonna call that pretty little baby? Ooh, pretty little baby. It began like a fairy tale and came to define in one word what was best about folk music, the idealism and altruism, the reverence for tradition and for protest. And the one word that said all that was Newport, by which people meant the Newport Folk Festival. George Ween, producer of the Newport Jazz Festival, got the idea in 1958, and he knew only one guy could pull it together, Pete Seeger. They gathered a nonprofit board and got to work. This would be unlike any festival before. This would be for everybody. The biggest stars alongside the real stuff. And by real stuff, they meant poor and working class people who made music not for record companies, but for themselves. For this to work, everybody had to be treated the same. Theodore Bikel might be starring in a little Broadway show called The Sound of Music, but he'd get the same 50 bucks as sharecropper Mississippi John Hurt. And like a fairy tale, it worked for a while. At the first festival in 1959, a shy teenager, not on the bill, sang with Bob Gibson. We are crossing, we are crossing at Jordan River. At Jordan River. Want my crown? Want my crown? I want my crown. Want my crown? We are crossing, we are crossing at, Jordan River. at Jordan River. I want my crown. I want my golden crown, Jordan River, Jordan River, deep and wide. Deep and wide. I've, got I've got a home on the other side. On the other side. Oh, we are crossing, we are crossing at, Jordan at Jordan River. I want my crown. Joan Baez was soon dubbed the Queen of Folk by Time Magazine, and the '60s revival exploded. She repaid the debt in 1963 sharing her stage with an unbilled songwriter, Bob Dylan. I want Bob Dylan to come up now and finish up. Oh, my name it is nothing my age it means less. The Prophets went to a Newport Festival Foundation that scoured the country for more of that real stuff. Cowboys and convicts, Lumberjacks and front porch fiddlers, street corner bluesmen and country barn square dancers. They hired folklorist Ralph Rinsler, who found treasure after treasure. He found Cajun legend Dewey Balfa in Mamou, Louisiana, staying long enough to start a festival that launched a Cajun revival still going strong. <laughs> The civil rights movement was always present, on stage and off. Newport invited the movement's frontline vocal group, the Freedom Singers, whose fierce sound was designed to be heard above attacking police dogs, bullhorns, and rock-throwing racists. Talk about the real stuff. In 1964, the festival bus picked up an all-white choir from Alabama, and then the all-black Georgia Sea Island singers. Everybody froze. Segregation was still the law where they came from. Then, men from the white choir stood to give their seats to women from the black choir. Because this was Newport. Everybody the same. Something was coming apart in 1965. Everybody knew it. Folklorist Alan Lomax and Dylan's manager Albert Grossman literally came to blows over whether the Paul Butterfield Blues Band was really a blues band. And the star system was taking over, creating the inequality Newport had worked so hard to keep away. Thousands came only for Dylan, squatting by the main stage, not interested in hearing anyone else. Pop history says Dylan was booed off the stage for using an electric guitar. But Newport hired electric bands every year. In fact, Dylan was accompanied by Butterfield's band, who'd been booked on their own merits. 
So was he booed? Al Cooper, who was on stage, says yes, but only when Dylan left after just three songs. Joe Boyd, who did the sound, says what he heard were shouts of Bob and more. And Dylan returned to wild cheers for not one, but two encores. Still, the myth spread like wildfire because it was useful to a burgeoning rock industry hungry to steal folk's crown as the radical music of the era. And so the lie became truth, as so often happens when there's money to be made on the lie. Newport declined after that, though there were still important moments, crucial showcases for Phil Oakes, the Chambers Brothers, Joni Mitchell, Arlo Guthrie, Richie Havens, James Taylor. But it was another bad rap that finally ended the festival. In 1971, a mob rushed over the fences. The city council canceled the permit for the folk festival, even though the disturbance had happened at the jazz festival. The 60s were over, the fairy tale was over for a while. In 1985, George Ween revived the folk festival, but it would have to run like a business now. Under the brilliant direction of Robert Jones, among the most significant activists of the folk revival, and his daughters Nalini and Radhika, the festival offered a smart mix of 60s stars, roots legends, and newcomers. But Newport was doing exactly what it did before, keeping the uneasy crossroads of old and new art and commerce. The young Turks of the 60s were now the old guard, Baez, Judy Collins, Tom Paxton, there to anoint a new generation. And the new folk, Nancy Griffith, Billy Bragg, Ani DeFranco, Alison Krauss, stood so proudly alongside traditional legends like John Lee Hooker and Doc Watson. But the stars sold the tickets now. Over 10,000 came to James Taylor's 1998 return and even more to Bob Dylan's triumphant and truly odd 2002 appearance in fake beard and wig. Who knows? It's gone through ups and downs since then because that crossroads is more uneasy than ever. It's now run by the Newport Festival Foundation, but just as controversial as ever. Every year, some complain it's gone too far and others not far enough. That tension is where we have to live, says producer Jay Sweet, accepting your past while inventing your future. They had Janis Joplin, we had Alabama Shakes. They had Bessie Jones, we had Mavis Staples. They had Dylan going electric, we had the Pixies going acoustic. There was a guy An underwater guy who controlled the sea. His favorite memory? 92-year-old Pete Seeger climbing a sound tower to get away from fans and really listen to the Decemberists. And that's there every year, too. The old sanctifying the young with their approval and sometimes with their scorn. But this is the living face of tradition, a timeless process that always brings fire as well as warmth. And it happens every year in all its beautiful, boisterous human glory at a crossroads called the Newport Folk Festival. Mm -hmm.